I fence blew down in the wind last night. I'm in the middle of a kitchen refurb. I haven't got time to sort this out. So I've got to try and work out today how best to fix something that I know ultimately needs completely replacing. This fence was put in in about 2010 by a friend of my father-in-law's. Um, really kind of him to do it at the time, but it wasn't done how I would have done it, and it's rotted. And uh, yeah, that's the, that's the result. So we're going to try and fix this today in as cost-effective a way as possible, given that in a few years' time we're probably going to have to rip it out and start again. Now we've got a really chaotic mixture of fences here. Panel fences dating back to the 1970s and this more recent repair, through to the traditional close board Aris rail fence that I installed four years ago. You might have seen the video on that. And then there's this one, also close board, but built with these separate rails at the back rather than Aris rails that are notched into the fence posts. And the reason I would have done things differently is there are a couple of problems with this fence. Firstly, it doesn't have gravel boards running along the bottom to protect the feather edge boarding from rotting against the ground. You can easily replace a gravel board, but feather edge boards are all going to rot simultaneously, meaning you've got to replace the whole lot. The other thing is the Aris rail system I installed four years ago has counter and capping rails along the top, which I think is quite a nice touch because it provides more strength to the fence along the top and protects those end grains of the boards from the weather. Compare that with this one. But the main issue we've got here is that these posts have snapped off at ground level. This being where it rots. It actually rots below ground as well and I know that because when I dug the holes for the new fence posts I couldn't find much of the old posts left behind in the ground. So this is clearly the weak point of a fence like this which don't forget is now 13 years old. Some people would say that's had a good lifespan. Now concrete fence posts or wooden fence posts supported by a concrete spur are admittedly a lot stronger. I've made this point before and people have said to me concrete posts aren't as good as they used to be and they have been known to snap off. But my point here is I just don't really want to use concrete fence posts on my property. A bit out of character, I don't think they look as nice as wooden fence posts. And there are things you can do to protect these fence posts to make them last a hell of a lot longer than they would have done otherwise. You can use these post savers as I did with the Aris rail fence four years ago. And I went to the added step of treating the post below ground with this Bostic bituminous paint to prolong the life of the post as long as possible. But you do have to be careful with post savers. The fencing company who supplied me with that fence four years ago installed these in the wrong place. And one of them I realised today to my horror wasn't properly heat sealed to the post. So it's been accelerating the rotting process by creating a water trap between the post and the sleeve. And this one's not much better. You can see the telltale signs of damp on the side of the post. So having found a couple of old fence posts in the garage for the repair, I decided a much safer strategy in this case would be to use that Bostic paint rather than some sort of newfangled heat shrunk sleeve. And so with the post now treated and ready to be erected, it was time to dig two new holes to put them in. If you've got a fencing project coming up, I massively recommend you get one of these. It's a Roughneck Mutt Pro Demolition Scraper. I'll post a link in the description below the video, but it's fast becoming one of the most useful tools that I've, I've I've used over the last six months when it comes to sort of digging holes for fence posts. And the reason is, as you can see in here, there's stone in here and I'm using a combination of my SDS drill. So sort it of gets you so far, but then you can't get right to the hole in it with it. So I'm using this to actually break up the stone. It can be a slow process, particularly for a repair like this, where I'm digging close to the previous hole that was filled with concrete. But you just have to be patient and you will get through it. The other thing I love is this brilliant old fashioned digging tool because particularly for stone free ground, it cuts lovely round holes, perfect for the post and is much better at excavating soil than a trowel. So by about two o'clock, I had two holes ready for the posts, each about 450 mil deep. Setting each post in concrete is blindingly simple and very satisfying. I use fast setting mixers like this as I don't want to wait overnight for the post to set solid. You could drive stakes into the ground to screw each post to, to get it sitting perfectly true. But these days, 
I simply lean a spade up against the post to get it roughly in the right position, pour water a third of the depth of the hole and then fill with the cement mix until above the surface of the water. The instructions say tap the surface but I think it's better to get a stick and drive it right down to the base of the hole as by doing this you find there are lots of pockets of unmixed cement that need mixing up. With this done, you've got about five minutes to adjust the position of the post to get its spirit level perfect. And you don't need any supports because by this point the post is already pretty firm. And then it was exactly the same procedure with the second post. The next step was to secure new fence rails into position. This section of the fence had been designed to be removable so we could get diggers into the garden. But with the garden gate now demolished, this was no longer necessary. And so after trimming off the damaged sections where the old bolts had been torn out of the rails, the existing rails were too short. So I bought three new 4x2 tantalised sections from a local timber yard. And after treating the cut ends with the bitumen paint, I screwed the new rails into place with 6x100 mm screws. No, these aren't exterior screws, but I'm pretty sure they'll outlive the fence. Time to point out an error I'm really cross about. It was 4.15pm and with time marching I was so involved in the job I didn't think to check whether the fence was level before reattaching the existing fence to the new post. And as you can see it has sunk into the ground over the years and could have done with being raised 25 to 30 millimetres. I didn't notice the impact of this until I'd finished the fence. More on that in a bit. The post next to the corner post had also rotted from its concrete base at ground level. It'll be totally secure now it's screwed into the corner post by the rails, but I decided also to, to attach it with an extra long exterior fixing screw. I've probably done nothing but create a potential point of water penetration, but it was satisfying to drive home nonetheless. Pretty much all that remained was to fix back into position the feather edge boards I'd salvaged from the collapsed fence using 40 by 2.65 mm galvanised nails I had left over from the garage re-roof. If it had been a wider section of fence I'd have used a jig to prevent me having to periodically check the feather edge boards were level as I did for that Aris rail fence I showed you earlier. But the whole process of refixing the boards probably only took about three quarters of an hour so I didn't bother. Now the end result of not straightening those rails or string lining the top of the fence before attaching the feather boards and instead allowing the feather edge boarding to follow the ground left this uneven top edge. So I stretched a chalk line across to establish as straight an edge as I could and trimmed the boards level by eye using my circular saw. Which is fine but doesn't disguise the dip caused by not truing up the existing fence before attaching those new rails. Oh well you live and learn as ever and I could always remove the last few feather boards at some point and raise it up if I've got nothing better to do. Penultimate job was to cut the post off at an angle which I did most of using my ever brilliant and oh so versatile circular saw. and then a coat of the bitumen paint because, well, I had it open so it seemed to make sense to use it. The corner post was a bit more tricky, but I managed to get an angle of sorts on it by cutting it by hand with my Jack Universal saw. And it's raining again. One final job was to treat those two new posts as they've been in the garage for decades and I don't know how well tantalised they are, if at all. So yeah, that's the primer, courtesy of Wood Finches Direct. They haven't paid me for that reference. About time people start paying me for this stuff. And then for the uh, top coat, I'm going to be using this Fitters um, exterior build wood oil. Overkill probably, but I love being in an overkill situation. So anyway, that's it. Temporary repair complete. And I'm pretty chuffed with it actually. Uh, I say it's temporary, this is literally not going anywhere. I'll probably outlive my time at this house and I have no intention of moving anytime soon. Ah, oh, one point to mention. I told you these two posts were um, uh, old bits of wood I had lying around in the garage. The bigger one here is this one, which is incredibly sturdy. I m noticed from the moment I put it in how this wasn't moving. And that's a four and a half inch or um, 100, 115 millimeter post. When compared with this more typical post here, I say more typical because you're more likely to get a post like this from a 
from a fencing company and that is four inch or 100 mil um, in, in, in depth. What was striking about the difference was just how much more sturdy this thicker post was uh, than this narrow one. Although obviously this narrow one now it's fixed into the corner is, is absolutely rock solid. Just something to be aware of if you're planning to build a pergola or other structure. If, where at all possible go with something slightly wider. And of course that Aris rail fence I constructed at the bottom of the garden was slightly different because of those V-notched posts and the dimension of those is 5 by 4 inch or 125 by 100 mil. And the total costing 77 quid, slightly ruined by having to buy those three new rails. So that's it for today. All systems go again on the kitchen refurb if you were expecting that video this weekend. Um, either way, thanks for watching and thank you to all my regular subscribers and new subscribers for tuning in today to see what I've been up to. As usual, details of everything I've spoken about today will be in the description below the video. You can access that on your smartphone or on your PC by clicking on the usual links. And as I always say, if you're new to my channel, it would mean so much to me to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here. And don't forget to click the bell notification icon so you get notified of all my future uploads. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.